Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh, brothers and sisters, jazakumullah khairan for affording me some of, some of your time once again. A uh, particular shout out, subhanAllah, to the jama'a, the congregation at Masjidul Ashiqeen, and by extension, anyone that you happen to share the link to this particular session with. Alhamdulillah, this is the second in a series that we have been hosting at the masjid uh, in a bit to the build up to the month of Ramadan, more particularly focusing on creating a sense of mindfulness so that, inshallah, in the Ramadan that we observe, which we hope to fast as, as a Ramadan, not knowing that Allah will grant us a guarantee of life beyond tomorrow, but anticipating and, inshallah, hopeful in earnest that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless us with the ability of being able to observe this next Ramadan, fasting our Ramadan as a farewell Ramadan. And if Allah gives us the life that we pray for beyond this Ramadan to observe, inshallah, many, many more, then inshallah may these tools and these discussions serve as a means of being able to refine what is being shared and the deliberations that will ensue as a result of these shares uh, so that we refine that Ramadan upon Ramadan. So a quick recap for those of us who have been with us subhanAllah last week. We had spoken and introduced the idea of mindfulness uh, under the guise of the Islamic term. So the Islamic term used for mindfulness, muraqaba mindfulness as a term may be fairly new to the discourse but the concept of muraqaba finding itself subhanallah sitting squarely with none other than the best of human beings who grace the face of the earth that being muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and one of the fruits of muraqaba aside from the reward of eternal paradise in the hereafter is the idea the idea that one would be able to establish a state a state of tranquility and calmness leading to contentment in our life because subhanallah all of us know that the hustle and bustle of life and the pressures of life, not just work life, but study life and not just work and study life, but work life, study life, family life, and all the other communal responsibilities that are thrust upon us means that at times there's just so much of noise in our minds. And we need to come to the sense of peace, quietness, stillness, so that we can think, ponder, reflect, and then act so muraqaba as the foundation of all deeds of the heart subhanallah is a means of us being able to positively positively exude our spirituality and have a mental emotional state that's very much in keeping with those hearts that have found contentment this week inshallah we hope to speak a little bit around the virtue of silence and seclusion so we all know very well the statement that says silence is golden. And if you look at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and what was said with regards to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, some of the, this being preserved in the traditions that we get from the companions radiallahu anhum, it is said, that he Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam would observe silence for lengthy periods of times. Subhanallah, if we had to go one further and look at a direct saying of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, then that would be where Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam says, whoever believes in Allah in the last day, let him speak good or remain silent. So the question would beg to be asked, why would Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam himself practice upon observing lengthy periods of silence, number one, and number two, why would Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam then further encourage us towards observing silence if we have nothing to say. So let's take a step back and look at some of our actions and practices. Many a times, there's an utterance that's forthcoming from any one of us with nadama, regret, remorse, that's lifelong. Because once those words have been emitted from your tongue, from your mouth, subhanAllah, and have left your lips, there's no way of being able to recall them. Well, you may send out some communique to the broader population, you know, in the age of social media, make a public statement of some sort of retraction. But the pain and the hurt that would have been caused by virtue of those words would never ever be able to be undone. Someone may forgive you, but the pain may linger on. And this is one of the insights in terms of why Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam had mentioned and had encouraged and himself practices on, practiced on this idea of lengthy periods of silence. Because he, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, was always centered was always, subhanAllah, in a sense of composure that he, sallallahu alayhi wa thought about what he himself was busy processing. He gave ample thought to whether and what would be the best mode and manner to 
respond to any sort of stimuli as well as would have in his in his own mind reasoned out the best and most opportune time to provide that response to people we also know that with regards to many of our utterances we are held accountable in fact for all of them when something is a thought or notion that lingers in the mind then subhanallah the angels who are recording all of our deeds if it is a good intention then allah through his mercy grants us reward but if someone's toying with the idea of something that not, may not be seen favorably in the sharia then subhanallah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has it such that the malaika withhold from writing that down as an evil action and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's justification out of his rahmah and compassion for us is that my servant has not acted on that so how can i hold him or her accountable for it but once we have given expression to that evil less praiseworthy action by virtue of either our limbs or our tongues then subhanallah it's recorded and then we are duty bound to seek forgiveness from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this idea of having lengthy periods of silence finds itself in subhanallah that grounding where we would work towards thinking about the responses of our limbs and our tongue so that they are apt they are well timed and there are those that are received in a manner that would bring about a greater sense of positivity in terms of our own life and those whom we are addressing and this is one of the reasons why muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam observed lengthy periods of silence so even if it's not with regards to a, another individual we find that there's this relationship between silence and this concept of muraqaba of introspection in a manner that observing the silence and seclusion for a regular period of time cultivates a sense of presence and this can only be done when the mind is at rest and in a state of awareness of the here and now my mind goes to one of the surah of quran surah al-asr where in or with regards to which imam shafi rahimahullah had mentioned had this been the only surah that was revealed for the hidayah and the guidance of mankind it would have sufficed subhanallah why because the latter phrases of the surah wa tawasaw bil haqq wa tawasaw bis sabr that we generally refer to as and they counsel each other and themselves unto truth and they counsel each other and themselves unto patient perseverance is one understanding of this but subhanallah if we look at some of the commentators on these verses then they speak about haq as the sense of living in the now not having anxiety about the future nor being so discolored by what has happened in the past that we feel so much of regret and remorse and despair in a manner that it brings us down and many a times may even lead to the brink of depression so the sense of presence and living in the here and the now comes when the mind is aware and the mind is aware and conscious when the mind is in the state of restfulness what the was so bil haq what the was so bil sab from amongst the great spiritual luminaries abu bakr al farisi was asked about the silence of one's innermost being and he said it is to abandon preoccupation with the past and the future very much in keeping with what we had shared from this short surah of quran so appreciating the virtue and the benefit of having these periods of silence we now come to how do we cultivate this silence this collectedness this awareness this being in the now the state of tranquility and this is through many practices in meditation now when the word meditation is used automatically we begin to worry we have concerns surrounding whether something alien to islam is going to be shared with us or what is this new idea that's being uh, propagated to us and where does it find where does it find its roots and its origins so to content us we look at the definition of the word meditation we would find that it's derived from latin and the the word meditation would find its roots in speaking about the concept or the notion of thinking over 
Meditation is defined as continued or extended thought, reflection, linked to devout religious contemplation or spiritual introspection. So dealing with the inner self. And we know, subhanAllah, living as Muslims, there's the continuous need to bring together the outward and the inward so that you live in a sense of synchrony and synergy between the actions of your limbs and that which is apparent and outward, which everyone can see, as well as that which is contained in your heart and your mind. The disclaimer, many of us as Muslims are understandably hesitant or skeptical about this word meditation because there are so many different types of meditations that being, are being touted and shared everywhere, some of which are specifically associated with either other religious beliefs, meaning other religions outside of Islam, or other religious practices that contradict Islam. And I want to give you that composure and inshallah uh, allow you to be in a state of solace and comfort to note that all that we are sharing with you can be traced back to the teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So when we look at the methods and the modalities and the approaches and the tools, these would be as we have as, be, as has been shared with us by our spiritual luminaries and they in turn subhanallah had learned this from their teachers who would have an unbroken chain that links back to muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam with that being said that's our primary source of being able to extract tools and techniques that would assist us but we also know that muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam had mentioned to us that wisdom is the lost property of a believer so wherever he or she finds it he has a right to it and he should naturally or she should naturally extract from it. So we are not closed to the idea of as a second resource, looking at tools and techniques that are found out of the Islamic teaching. But our primary would always be to take directly from the source of all inspiration and love, progress, productivity. And that would be none other than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanak ya Rabbi, where do we find ourselves? We find ourselves this evening some 24 hours before an evening that is commemorated in the Islamic calendar, while there may be academic and scholarly discussion surrounding whether or not the incident of Mi'araj transpired on the 27th of Rajab, generally speaking, most Muslims would observe the 27th of Rajab as a means of commemorating the Isra and the Mi'raj, the journey of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from Mecca to Al-Mukarramah to Masjid Al-Aqsa, and then from Masjid Al-Aqsa to the seven heavens, bringing us this great gift of Salah. So I thought fitting an eve before the eve in which we come, on which we commemorate uh, Mi'araj, that we speak a little bit with regards to this idea of meditation and Salah. And one of the sayings that comes to mind is that as presented to us by Ibn Al-Qayyum, rahimahullah, where he provided one of the best and most concise explanations to the many meanings of meditation in Islam. He detailed this idea of muraqaba to constitute the following. He states that an integral part of our preparation for the hereafter is via reflection in Arabic, tafakkur, remembering, tadakkur, examining, nadar, meditating, ta'amul, contemplating, i'tibar, deliberating, tadabbur, and pondering, istibsar. Each of these words is a term. Don't be flustered by the Arabic that you are familiar with ideas of reflection, remembrance, examination, meditation, contemplation, deliberation, and pondering are all ideas that we have some working knowledge of. Inshallah, over the next few weeks, we hope to hone and refine our ability to do each of these. Other than being terms that we're familiar with, these also represent different shades of mental activity that can be considered forms of meditation. And guess what? Each and every one of those that we have mentioned are found in different arkan postures or in different adhkar litanies that we recite and that we verbalize and articulate throughout our salah. So if we had to look at this idea of um, pondering istibsar, then we know that we commence our salah by the takbir tahrima that takbir which renders everything else null and void. Because when we raise our hands and we say Allahu Akbar, it is as if we have philosophically placed everything behind us. 
and we put ourselves into a state of where our focus is only what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is if you speak of the idea of tafakkur and reflecting then in the silent moments when we are either following the uh, imam or in the silent moments of our own salah we are reflecting over our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tadhakkur subhanallah remembrance salah is filled with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times there's also the concept of deliberation wherein in our salah when we recite the durood and salawat upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we remind ourselves of how close or far am I from the perfect example that was given to me in the personality of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for every aspect of our life. So I thought subhanallah I would share with you a little bit from this um, very concise comprehensive explanation of the meaning of muraqaba as shared by Ibn al-Qayyum rahimahullah. We also know that when it comes to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is great virtue attached to the outer that external remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but thinking and pondering over the blessings and the ni'am the bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shared with us is an even better way of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it's not occurring in the external it's mostly occurring with regards to the internal so no one knows there isn't the aspect of riya of ostentation of show and inshallah we hope that the skills and the tools that we'll share over the coming days and weeks inshallah will be those that we can implement during the build up to the month of ramadan so that we can actually use them as tools and techniques during the month of ramadan and inshallah from there forever much longer that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us life noting that we will use ramadan and ramadan as a means of continuously growing and refining ourselves with a few minutes remaining before we close this evening's uh, discussion and session subhanallah share with you a few jewels we know that some of the salah so the oqat of salah five of them commencing in the evening when the sun sets with maghrib isha and then fajr these are the three oqat that are observed during the dark hours and then we have dhuhr and asr that are observed during the light hours why is it that the qiraa of maghrib isha and fajr is audible whereas that of dhuhr and asr is inaudible it's because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it such that our sense of hearing is more pronounced during the dark hours and hence when quran is recited then subhanallah we may be the recipients of the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as allah mentions in the closing verses of surah al-a'raf but then you would argue why then not the same during the day because in the day Allah has made the qira inaudible one of the hikam and wisdoms behind this is that so that we can find the sense of being centered and realigned with our primary obje objective which is وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions early in the 27 juz of Quran that we have not created you for nothing except the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meaning Allah has created us exclusively for his worship I hope inshallah this evening short session has allowed us to gain some sort of an understanding of how there are aspects of muraqaba wondering reflecting meditating that are subhanallah very much a part of all of the arkan of our salah and inshallah in the weeks to come we hope that we will look at some ideas of muraqaba as can be exercised in dua in adhkar and, and then look at some physical well, not so physical, but look at some examples and exercises that we can use from Islam that will help us to build a greater sense of muraqaba and being mindful. Up until the next time, from myself, Abdul Rahman, and subhanAllah, the various teams working at Masjid al Ashikin to bring to you these sessions, we say, Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.